Yo, 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 what's going on guys? I hope you're all super well. It is definitely one of the toughest days in my journey to becoming a professional. Sometimes it gets really tough, but I don't want to go into that now. I want to start this off positively. We'll get into that a bit later, but I'm walking down now to get some lunch and also a snack before the game because last time I had lunch and then when I got on the bus to go from Dorchester to New Milton, which was an hour, I didn't have any food. So I kind of played on an empty stomach, which was not good. So I'm going to make sure I'm prepared well this time. Got myself some pasta as well as some other veggies. It was actually a pretty good deal. There was like a salad bar and you just pick what you want. So I got a couple boiled eggs and pasta. Now I'm really full. I have literally no time to talk about what I want to talk about in detail and the way I want to talk about it. So we're going to throw it to future Sheldon who will talk to you guys about it. Thanks for that mate. So the thing that I want to talk about today is one of the many million different reasons of why it's difficult to become a professional footballer. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm saying that this is one of the drawbacks in chasing this goal. This isn't the same for everyone but in my situation having to move from Australia to England or wherever I may go in the world, I'm leaving everything in Australia behind and that includes family, that includes my job, my home, my dog, my bed, everything like that I'm leaving behind just to chase this goal of becoming a footballer. When I left Australia, I was completely okay with that. I was like, well, what does it matter? I, I want to chase my goal. I'm not too worried about that stuff. Sure, I'd love to have it, but this is what I need to do in order to get where I want to go. And that's still my vision and that's what I need to keep telling myself. But on the day of that recording, it really hit me hard. I had a girlfriend back in Australia and we were together for nearly four years just before I left. And on that day, we decided to break it off. And it's tough because we both still really want to be with each other, but we know it's not really possible with the amount of money that she has, the amount of money I have. It makes it a very difficult situation for her to come over here and live with me. Now, most of you are probably gonna be saying, oh, it's just a girl, it's a girlfriend, or whatever it may be, but in my life, ever since I was about 17 or so, I kind of didn't really have many friends. I had my core group at school, which is, I still speak to a few of them. I speak to maybe three of them occasionally, not regularly, and I would see them in Australia before I left a couple times, not often, but I was a real outsider from everyone in my school, my group, even my girlfriend, I never went out drinking. I, I don't drink alcohol anymore. I used to a little bit, but not anymore. And that made it really difficult to be with my friends, which resulted in me not having many friends. That wasn't the end of the world because I had my dad there. My dad is probably, I'd say, almost like a best friend to me. And that goes the same for my girlfriend. So I have these two really close people who have been with me for years. And it's so difficult to throw that all away. And on that day that I recorded the clip, it's... It's tough and I just need to add this last little bit in. So one of the things that I'm really missing out on here is team training. And the benefit of team training is that it means that I'm getting better in an environment where it's competitive and it's similar to a game of football. But the other massive thing is, is that's where the social life is for the last, ever since I started playing when I was five, that's where my social life has been. Meeting new people in teams and meeting new people every year. I still remember players from the under 14s and the under 10s who I had really good friendships with, but I don't speak to them anymore. But you just develop a bond with different players and that's where you get your friendships from. And that's what I really enjoy about football, being part of a team. And I just don't feel part of a team, it sucks. It's definitely not something that's going to put me off this whole goal of becoming a professional footballer. I just want you guys to know because there's so many people who are messaging me saying, I'm 16, when I get turn 18, I'm going to go overseas and become a professional footballer. I'm going to do the challenge you're doing, all of that sort of stuff. And I want to tell you guys, it's tough. It may be easy to begin with for the first couple of weeks, months. It could have been maybe a year before it hit me, but when it hits you, it hits hard and you kind of go, well, do I want to be here? And I think that's the real test. Today is maybe four days after that recording. I'm still feeling it a little bit, but it's something that's always going to be in the back of my mind regardless. Having that home where everything's comfortable and that's something about life. If you want to chase your goals, if you want to go for those, being in a comfortable environment is not something that's going to help. You have to push yourself out of your comfort zone in order to achieve those goals. But man, I can tell you it's tough having to throw that all away. 
and go to chase your goal, especially when there's so many people that you love back in Australia or back home, it can be tough. I just wanted to be very open with you guys. This is a journey and the journey is going to have setbacks and drawbacks and this is just part of the ride. Let's get back with the video. Currently on the train, I've got, I've got another two and a half hours or so until I get to Dorchester. The team that we're versing this week, I'm pretty sure it's a league match and it's the same distance as the last one that we went to last week, but I have no idea the quality of the team. They could be really good, they could be really poor, and once again, I have no idea if I'm starting. We're gonna go there. This time, I think I'm going to have the mindset that I'm starting, and if I'm not, then I'll find the positives in not, and just accept the reality that I'm on the bench and then go from there because if I have the mindset that I'm starting and I do start then I'll be in a good position to play but if I have the mindset that I might not be then I'm not going to be 100% ready for that so that's the plan. Got myself a bacon and egg roll. The guy asked if I want sauce I said whatever you recommend and I'm actually having this baconese sauce it's like mayonnaise with bacon in it or something. It is so good though. It's also getting really cold and I'm sure you can hear the wind as well. I felt a sprinkle of rain I'm really hoping it's not raining tonight. Last time I played in Dorchester it was pouring, so... Let's hope it's okay weather. Walking to the ground now, that's three hours of the trip done. Now I've got another hour on the team bus at least. I think there's a team... Yeah, there is a team bus. Another hour on that, I'm feeling much better this week because I had some good food. Feeling ready for the game, I'm pumped. So keen to play. I'm going to head off now. I'm going to go get a banana from the Tesco, I think it is, just a shop. And that's going to provide me with a bit more fuel and energy for the game. And I'll probably have that half an hour through the trip. Gives me time to digest it. But this time I'm going to get some clips of the field, hopefully. But I will get clips of the team bus and what's going on there. But I'm not going to be talking. So I'll catch you guys later on. Played my match, I'm back at the Airbnb, and I did go in with the right mindset. I started the game, which was great, but I only played about 10 or so minutes at number 10 attacking midfield, and then I got put out on the left wing. I'm 90% sure it had something to do with me not understanding the defensive tactics well enough. I'm so used to playing as a lone 10 where I literally kind of just roam around or just hold on the six, the defensive midfielder, or press the strikers. But coming into a new system, it's something that's very difficult to get hold of straight away, and it takes time. I start off the game, I had a couple good touches, and then maybe in the seventh minute or so, the press that we had, I actually intercepted the ball, drove forward with it a little bit, and then had a shot from maybe five meters outside the box. And from that shot, it had a lot of bend on it. it I tried to strike it so that it would go to the top corner, but when I stroked the ball, it came off the outside of my foot a little bit and swerved away from the goalkeeper, which wasn't the worst thing because he tried to catch it and as he caught it, he fell to the ground, fumbled the ball and we got a goal. So another assist, which is great. So we're up 1-0 and then I got put out on the wing. I had another really good touch where the ball went up in the air, controlled the ball, went forward with it and then that drew the right back out of position. I touched it around him, went around the other side, got one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, but he just got there. I got a toe to it, but I, all I could do was kick it into him. I tried to chip it over, but he was just too quick. So I missed opportunity there, and then I came off about the 51st minute, 52nd minute, something like that. But overall, I thought I had a very good performance. It's just getting used to that defensive thing. The manager said to me before the game, do exactly what you did last week with the ball, work on being more physical and getting back in that press. When he says getting back in that press, making sure that I'm doing the right press, really. That's football. The manager has in mind exactly how he wants to play the game out. He has the different tactics, all of that sort of stuff. And if a player isn't doing what he's asking, then it's not going to work. So next time I'm going to ask him to get, maybe get a whiteboard out and explain it more thorough. Maybe even spend five, ten minutes on it so that I can really understand it and help the team better. Because if I'm not doing that job, then they're going to be able to find a way through us. Again, no one was filming. Oh, and actually, the linesman was from their team, and two times I was onside, made the run, got in behind, and the liners just flagged me. Couldn't believe it. Anyway, here's a bit of a room tour. We walk in, that's my bed, good bed. Got some towels there, I was gonna call that a couch. A chair, something there, I don't know. And then have a look at this. I have an ensuite in here. It's crazy, there's me. 
There's my shower. Definitely one of the better places I've stayed in, I reckon. Anyway, I'm going to get to bed now. I'm exhausted. I need to sleep. I need to recover. I have another big journey tomorrow. Ah, another three and a half hours back to Plymouth. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new around here. Join the journey, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye. Listen.